Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Today we have a continuation of the series which has mainly been hosted by you, which is Charlotte's Journey. I will feature slightly more in this episode due to the fact that I was slightly more involved um, at this stage rather than before when it was mm. more kind of medical things and hospital appointments. So, the day after Charlotte's biopsy, which was a very destructive, invasive, invasive process, which we were forewarned it would yeah. be, of course, because you're messing, not messing, but you're intruding on the brain. Mm -hmm. Your brain is not designed to be intruded upon, hence why it's a blood bearing barrier and all these other protective mechanisms around right. your brain. So Charlotte had that biopsy. Then, as you may or may not know, she did the video of Marcus Butler, which we've talked about. So I'll put that in the description link. I think we've already done it for a previous video, but we'll mm -hmm. do that again. And what astonished me about that is that Charlotte still actually has the bandage on the back of her neck from when her brain was accessed, Which literally was, 24 hours. It was 48, before, 48 hours, hours before. before. So I'm sure Marcus Butler was probably pretty amazed as well. So he turned up for that, and that was the video they released that went to the Bonker Awards, where um, Charlotte was nominated. Charlotte had no idea he was coming, and, and neither Charlotte did we. had no idea he was coming, and neither did we. So he turned up at the front door, and... Um, well, you can see the rest of yourself via the video, which as I said will be in the description box below. Furthermore, we received a very, very touching gift from someone who you met through YouTube. Mm, Amanda, and uh, I know that Amanda will be watching this and um, it's very tough for her at the moment. Uh, she lost her son on the 5th of March this year and uh, Matthew had only been ill for three weeks only 19 years old and he was dead within three weeks and um, I've been trying to support her and she's supported me and we've got to know each other quite well and email regularly and um, she gave Miles and I a very nice thank you gift which was very welcome. Yes this is, I'll put a photo up because I know you guys clearly can't see, this is a certificate of registration for a star, a star in the sky, mm -hmm. which is now being named the Charlotte Star by Amanda, and that will stay like that forever. Mm -hmm. That's gone to the Star Registry people. It's in the constellation Phoenix, and the location is NGC 89. So we're going to have a look on mm -hmm. some astrological maps and things to try and find that star. But yeah, it was, it was really amazing and really touching. Um, so yes, really. And briefly, I'd also just like people to Bear in mind also another friend, Goulet, who lost her only child on the 9th of January this year to Ewing sarcoma. Mm. And obviously she's finding it, uh, as we all are at the moment, quite difficult with Christmas coming up. Mm. So going back to Charlotte, uh, after she had Marcus, after she did the YouTube with Marcus Butler, you and her we went on the do. Friday, Few, so not even a week after the biopsy, went up to London. To yes, we did. We went up to Louis Vuitton to see the. What was it? it was a really, It was a show, wasn't it? It was the fashion show. The launch. The launch of their new collection. That's the word we we're looking for. Us, <laughs> fashion aficionados, here. So we went to that, um, which was very interesting, and we were greeted by our friends in Louis Vuitton. Who, if they're watching, thank you again for your amazing. Hospitality and kind of friendship. It was just Miles, uh, Charlotte and Miles that went. Yeah, it was just us two. So we went up there and we were accompanied on the tour of this by the head stylist of Louis Vuitton. And he's a lovely man. That was all brilliant. When Charlotte and I got there, there were a few other people there. Um, kind of bloggers and magazine writers and fashion writers. And I, I told one of them that I got my clothes off eBay. And... They didn't really understand that. They didn't understand how eBay could yield half decent clothes at cheap prices rather than mm. expensive tat at horrible prices. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we went on that and Charlotte by then was feeling mm. okay but the physical symptoms of the biopsy and the damage it had obviously done were becoming far more visible. Uh, she was really struggling to walk then unaided and the terrible thing is, you you will agree, the symptoms manifested themselves in a way that just looked like she was drunk. Yeah. She would walk, and it would look exactly like a drunk, a really drunk person would walk, just kind of staggering around. Um, 
so that was quite unpleasant. But we went to Pizza Express and had a nice meal there. And then we tried to get back and we had a really nice cab driver who was an Arsenal fan, which made it even better. Um, and he completely understood what was going on. I said, you know, she got drunk, she's just had this major operation. So we got the train back and then I had to phone you and Dad, mm. but we didn't think, I didn't think I'd be able to get her to the train, as was her... Um, a little buckling. A little, little buckling. buckling. And as she became more tired throughout the day, obviously, naturally, you have less strength to deal with that. So all in all, it was a fantastic day. It was a really, really great experience. Um, but I suppose on the flip side of that, it really marked the Turning beginning point. proper of her decline and it didn't really get only got worse from there really didn't it? Yeah, a lot worse. So Miles is going to let me do this one because he wasn't there and this is the results of the biopsy, so this one I'll do on my own. I don't need any notes for this because I can remember every single piece of it. It's embedded in my mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching my part, and I will hand over to you. So, we go to the 12th of October 2015. We went up to the Marston about lunchtime, because we knew we were going to get the results of the brain biopsy. We prayed that it was just going to be necrosis, and that would be sorted out with steroids, and that would be it. So, we weren't sort of unduly worried, and he'd also said that there were other things that possibly could be done and there was medication and stuff. This was before we had any idea exactly what we were dealing with. I can remember it very well. I can remember the room and we walked in. Charlotte was sitting on my left, my husband on my right, our consultant in front of us. There was another gentleman sitting across the room and there was our clinical nurse specialist sitting on the bed who I believe also hadn't managed to catch up to speed with what the diagnosis was and he always had a sort of wheelie chair and the uh, floors are very slippery there so he would wheel himself around the consultant and he said what did the he got up and he washed his hands and came back and sat down what did the neurosurgeon say so I said well he said it could possibly be necro be necrosis but he also said it could be necrosis covering a tumour and with that he looked at us and he said, yes, it is necrosis covering a tumour. So I asked what type, Charlotte was shaking, and he said glioblastoma, multiple And for some reason I vaguely heard of that, but I didn't really know what it was. I didn't want to look it up, I didn't want to know too much about it. And he looked at Charlotte and he said, there's nothing more we can do for you. And she said, but there must be something else you could do for me. You said there was medication. And that was when he told me that NICE had turned down the request for her medication. It was a medication which would prolong her life a bit. It couldn't cure her. But it would give us the valuable time that we needed just to look around. Looking back on it, there wasn't anything, but we didn't know that at the time. We just clung on to anything that we could. And he said there was nothing more he could do. And we cried and Charlotte was just in total disbelief. She yet again had been given another death sentence and we seem to be getting these quite regularly now with clinical trials and not being anything. We said could we start a fund? We'd pay. We'd pay for anything. And he said that he would look into getting something privately. We left there completely broken and I knew in my heart of hearts that that was going to be the final nail in the coffin that I knew that she wasn't going to get over it. I never googled anything to do with glioblastoma. I just kept hoping, hoping so much that a miracle would happen, which of course it didn't. two things I want to say. I want to say thank you, which I forgot last week, to the King's College team who, when they did Charlotte's biopsy, they all came in on the Sunday in their own time to do it and I'm forever grateful for that. The other thing we found after we'd been given a diagnosis, it was suddenly on 
full alert and we almost seemed to be just dumped it was into the sort of palliative care it was the most strange feeling my husband that week I blankly refused to go I couldn't go he had to go and see our GP with clinical nurses and they gave him this enormous toolbox full of stuff in case anything was to go wrong and we were told that she wasn't allowed to leave the house on her own anymore she was absolutely distraught. I do hope that uh, the funds that we raise will go and help other people. It is a truly devastating tumour. Next week I'll cover a bit more. Story. I knew this would be an emotional one to do, but there are a couple of other ones which I think are actually going to be even worse, but uh, I'll put all the links in below for Charlotte's bag. And we have actually got an auction running at the moment on some artwork, so it'd be great if people wanted to have a look at that, and even better if they wanted to bid on it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.